Hey, good morning, everybody. Name's Bennett Bennett. I was formerly with the drum uh, as the US staff writer, before that, copywriter at BBDO New York. And I am grateful to be standing in front of this really packed house in Chicago. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Joining me here on this stage is Shaquana Ford Joseph at Twitter. and Megan Colleen McGlynn at Girls' Day. <laughs> so I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, with both of these ladies, either through the program or uh, through Twitter or the communities that they represent. Uh, and I'd like for, you know, for the uninformed to understand the communities that they come from, uh, the places of, of gratitude that have helped them get to this point. So uh, Shaquana, you are part of the Ad Club of New York, uh, inaugural group of, of fellows, right? Uh, can you explain that to the, to the crowd? Um, yeah. Sure, so I was part of the inaugural group, as you said, of the I'm Part Women's Fellowship um, by the Ad Club of New York. And what that did was bring me into this very, I would say, exclusive group and introduce mm -hmm. me to this exclusive group of 10 women who I now call sisters. Um, and through this year-long program, not only did we get access to the Ad Club and everything that they had to offer, they also invested in us through um, night courses at PWC and providing us opportunities to go to conferences and mentorship and leadership so that we can take where we were in our career, which a lot of us are in middle management, and excel forward. So how can access to leadership, access to conferences, and basically just access to what you wouldn't normally have be able to help you propel your career moving forward? Cool, cool. And Megan, you founded Girls' Day a few years ago, so I'd love to hear a little bit of the, the history of that, why, you know, why it needed to exist. Uh, yeah. Um, Girls' Day started after a really awesome lunch with about 12 women, and we were all in advertising, and all different uh, jobs. There were, I'm a creative. My, part, my art director partner was there. Um, there were some producers and some reps and an art account director, and it was just, you know, two hours of this, and you know how you leave something like that, and you're like, we should do this again sometime. And I got serious and went and made a Facebook, Facebook group right away. And almost within a few weeks, it grew bigger than able, you know, we were able to have just lunches. So we just started meeting once a month and then the community just grew. And it's basically serves as like our clubhouse because we've, we've all seen Mad Men. We've all, you know, seen how it works in business with men and they hire their friends and they, you know, get to know each other on the golf course and they make deals in the strip clubs and this is our strip club <laughs> girls day so this is where we talk about our stuff and we get to know each other and like you said this is where we make connections with women who can help bring us up and we talk about everything we talk about all of you guys <laughs> so that's you know the short story of girls day are there any girls day girls here today okay hey guys I do, before we move on, want to give a shout out to the women of the current Ad Club Fellowship, right here in the front. Hey! Yeah, please stand up. Stand up, ladies. Great. Great. Uh, so, I've heard from previous panels, and, you know, it's a conversation that's ongoing throughout the industry, uh, just the retention of talent. Uh, and clearly, groups like the ones that you two belong to are important to, you know, keeping that sort of strong bond that probably will not only maintain a career, but propel a career forward. So you know, are there any examples from you know, past experiences to how these groups have enabled and propelled yourselves or other people? Um, in Girls' Day, I see that every day. I see women reaching out to each other every day, every different um, level, different you know, different kinds of jobs, the same, you know, we have the same responsibilities. How do I do this? We ask questions. I see that every day. Mm -hmm. But the important part, I think, which Shaquana mentioned is, you know, we're here and we're here, but we have to get more people up here, and this is a way to do that. And sometimes with Girls' Day, people will say, you're a great cheerleader. And it, it's really not just that. You have to show, here, here's who got this great promotion. Here's who's running this place now. Guess who just moved here? You know, who won this award? It's a way that we can like really, because I learned this from a um, panel yesterday, and I think even last 3% is, 
when I look for a job now, I'm less looking for like that perfect agency. I'm looking for a great boss. And I meet great bosses I want to work for every day in Girls' Day. Yeah, and in terms of retention, this group that I fostered has basically saved me and gave me that sounding board so that if I thought I can't do this anymore or no one's going through this, I can turn to them in a WhatsApp group and be like, listen, this is what just went down and before I go and tell someone some things that might get me fired, let me bounce this off of you. Mm -hmm. um, and that helps with my sanity, it helps with my self-care because it's, okay, this is a place where I can go. And then beyond that, I now have mentors that I can turn to and say like, here's what's happening now, how have you dealt with this in the past? Yeah, uh, Shaquana, you and I are around like mid-level, so we've reached a point where we're still looking up at people and we'll probably always look up to the uh, you know, individuals who paved the way for us, but we're kind of paving the way for other p individuals as well. Uh, how has that community allowed you to give back to, to those coming up? Yes, yeah, so uh, this program, the I'm Part program, there's also a reference piece or a referral piece to that. And it's like, if I see talent that I know could benefit from a program like this, I'm going to refer them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that I'm putting them in front of the people who, so they can get noticed. And as they move forward, mentor them, help them, and pull them along. Because if it ends with me or if it ends with you, what are we doing in this industry? And that's, that goes for the people who are above, of, above us. If no one took the time to say there's something special in Shaquana, yeah. I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah. Yeah, and Megan, you know, you're based in the Chicago area. Uh, you know, this is a windy city, a, a, city, <laughs> a city that is probably going to be blowing in with talent after this uh, conference. Uh, highlights how dope this city is. Uh, you know, Girls' Day is clearly bigger than just a sisterhood, right? Uh, you know, how, you know, I don't know, like, how do you uh, see this initiative, uh, you know, helping out agencies in the future and helping out, you know, all the other players in the space that probably are looking for women and probably looking for ways to, you know, champion them better? Um, a lot of recruiters have joined Girls' Day, and we have a, a completely separate page just devoted to, or just dedicated to job leads and needs. Mm -hmm. So um, freelancers post, and that's another thing that I wanted to mention. It, it's been a nice place for freelancers, because sometimes we miss out on a lot of the culture of an agency. I'd, I'd never been to a leadership conference until I went to 3% uh, th two years ago, because Kat gave me a scholarship. And I was 50 years old at my first leadership conference. I'm like, hey. Way to be right on that, Megan, but that's kind of my story, you know. <laughs> and, but it just opened a whole new, like you had mentioned, here's these women, here are my people that have gone through things that, you know, I always, that the thing I hear a lot and that makes me so happy is when someone says, oh, I thought I was the only one that felt like that, or I didn't, you know, I didn't know anyone else had been through that. And we've all been through probably somewhat similar position of any, you know, the worst thing that's happened to you, I bet someone else is like, yeah, I remember that one happened to me. So it's just been, you know, a way to, it, it's been a support system more than, you know, I think more than a sisterhood, but in terms of, you know, more men know about it now. And people ask me for recos. And, uh, you know, we can post the, hey, I heard Digitas is looking for an ACD. And it's stuff like that. Hey, Digitas. <laughs> so it's, it's, not, it's more than just, you know, a place to share, hey, this is an excellent bra you guys should look into. You know, I'm kind of strict about what we post because I want to stay focused on retention and bringing other people up and getting the higher positions. Yeah, and I'm sure, Saquani, you've probably become the, you know, you, your fellow fellows, and the fellows that came after those fellows <laughs> uh, have probably been the plug for, you know, many people and probably many opportunities in and around the advertising space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we share with each other. There are people that are in my class that have now moved on to positions where they are the hiring manager. They have the ability to, to choose who they're going to work with. And the first place that they're turning is to us. And it's, hey, who needs this? Who can you refer to me? What can I do to help you? And so we've now fostered that. And it's just like you said, just because they're in the, you're in the fellowship at any given time doesn't mean that you are um, not ready to take on a role. We're at all different levels of the fellowship. So this is the first place that I'm going to foster new talent. The ad club has already told me that you're really good, so you just need to come on and work with me. Right, right. So I have one last question because as a man ambassador, there's only so much I can ask the women and there's so many of you in the audience. Uh, but 
what are some simple ways to at least show gratitude for those, you know, for those of us who are, you know, looking to, to champion, to advocate, to, you know, do what both of you have done so well? Um, one thing I can say, that it, start by hearing us and saying thank you. Um, a lot of times we're there and we're not being pushed to be heard, so that's one great thing. And then also look to us to tap into our networks. Don't allow it to just be the boys club where you're like, even if I bring a suggestion to the table or a candidate to the table, that's great, but we've already got who we want. Be open to what we have to offer and then be willing to, especially with retention and bringing people in, have a diverse set of candidates. I'm not asking you to only hire diverse candidates, but at least do your due diligence of having a diverse slate and find the person that's gonna do the best work for you. Yeah. Ask us, okay. just ask us, what do you need? You know, what, what can I do? Um, is there something that you're missing? What did it, you know? What did you think of that meeting? Did I? Did you see that differently than I did? Did you hear that differently than I did? Just ask us. We love to tell you. Okay. All right. So since you're telling me to ask you guys, I would like to ask anybody who wants to ask a question to these uh, dope young women. Uh, you know, you like to ask a question? Please you raise your to. hand. I've got this. I've always wanted to throw this. <laughs> Anybody on the stage? Oh, Erica. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. I don't really have a question, but I just want to say that you guys are really awesome. I really want to thank Shaquana Joseph for being there on the stage. She has been a tremendous Hello. fellow. She has followed the program and made us very proud because of her ascension um, and because of the way she does things. I just join Girls Day, the group, so I'm, I'm really excited about it, and good luck to you, Bennett Bennett, on your next journey. Oh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Anybody else in the crowd? Um, so I'm one of the fellows, and I'm, I'm lucky to have heard about this program, but I'm curious if you guys have any advice for those women that are uh, seeking out groups yeah. and sponsorships and fellowships. How did you find yours and suggestions for others to find theirs? Yeah, so mine started, I went to Howard University for undergrad, and you know. Um, <laughs> and so that sparked a network within where we were already sharing. But then as I met people within the industry, I would email things out that I thought would be a good fit for them. So when the ad club, when this um, fellowship came about, it was actually someone in my Howard network that was like, hey, you should do this. And then I took it upon myself to send it out to all the women that I knew in advertising to be like, hey, you should do this. So sharing and getting to know people and building your network and purposefully networking. Like, I don't go to networking events just to be like, hey, I'm here, see me. I purposefully go and I'm like, these are the people in the room that I want to talk to and this is why I'm here and this is what I need for me right now and this is the intention that I'm going in with. So doing that, I promise you, you'll come out with more people that are actually responding to your emails, not being sent out in the abyss or like pretending that they want to talk to you and not responding um, <laughs> when you go in with a purpose. Cool. I started the group that I thought I needed. I, you know, as a freelancer, I, you know, I was like, gosh, I would love to have, you know, these women to ask questions to because I'm not, you know, you know how freelancers are. We're in, we're out, we think we're cool, and then we leave. And then, um, but I do, I have learned so much. I, you know, I forgot to get a mentor. I didn't know about that. Um, so this, I feel like I have 4,000 mentors now. So start it. If you feel like, you, you know, there's, there's something that you're missing, go ahead and start it. All it was was a Facebook group. I think there's a lot of, conver uh, anybody else? Uh, do have one uh, question that did pop up in my head. Uh, there's, you know, intersectionality is a huge thing that we don't talk about enough. And, you know, we've seen the midterm elections and we've seen the elections before that. And it seems like, you know, in a sense, according to numbers, like there may be a division between, you know, white women and people and women of color. Mm -hmm. You know, what can, you know, people on both sides do to, you know, be kinder to each other, probably uh, uplift, you know, each other so that, you know, you all can make it because we need all, we, we need all you women in leadership, right? right? Um, go out of your way to include everyone. I th I, in the beginning, I learned 
um, I just kind of made it a blanket thing, join Girls Day. If you're not a man, join. And then I had to realize, I realized that I had to be specific. If you are non-binary, if you are, you know, um, not traditional gender, women of every color, this is for you. You have to say who's invited. You have to point people out. And then you have to look for them. Anytime I see an article or I'll steal from someone else's, you know, Twitter, I'm like, oh, who's that? She got, oh, look at that work. Who's that? And then I ask her to join and then, you know, one of us, one of <laughs> us. <laughs> um, for me, it's actually having the honest conversations. I'm sorry, I'm just tired of being lied to. Um, and the polls actually show that. So just being very upfront and honest about who you are, where you stand, and us being mature enough to have these conversations and hear both sides and understand both sides. We don't have to agree, but at least just have the conversation and be upfront with me so that I don't feel like you're coming at me with this facade to try to fit in. Cool, cool. Do make sure you follow them on Twitter so that if you need tidbits, like you can get from them, probably steal and bring to your own communities. Uh, we were supposed to have a third panelist, uh, Swati Bhattacharya from FCB Olka in Mumbai, but unfortunately she was ill, so uh, she couldn't be part of this panel, but she did write uh, a really nice letter to a woman who helped her out in the industry. Uh, by the name of Susan Creedle. Is anybody familiar with that name? <laughs> so I'm gonna do my best to uh, emulate the emotion and spirit of, of this letter. Uh, so if you don't mind, uh, I'll, uh, Susan, if you're in the audience or watching the live stream, uh, this is from Swati. Dear Susan, I've been writing this letter in my head for years now. So much so that it has made a bed inside my head. And now, thanks to the 3% conference and movement, it is becoming a real thing. I hope it helps a lot more of us to become a Susan Fowler Creedle to someone. Three years back when I met you at Tenerife while judging the Cleos, I didn't know of this concept called Susan Creedle. I knew you were someone important because you were always surrounded by people. And of course, I was a nobody. <laughs> And I was just happy to watch you guys and girls from afar. And then one night, you walked up to me. We started to talk, not about work, but about life. Like, not like senior talking to a junior, but like peers and sisters talking to each other. The next day, I moved back to my anonymous life in New Delhi. Next, I heard from you when you wanted me to be chief creative officer of FCB in India. By then, I had moved on to a three-day week job, thinking my days in advertising were over. Your offer gripped me with fear and nausea. Not only did I not feel deserving, I was acutely aware of the fact that I had never won internationally and that this job came to me on the back of a rambly five-hour conversation. What could you have possibly seen in me? Did I show you something I was not? While I said no to you and thank you profusely for the honor, you wrote me a letter and that letter changed my mind. Over these years, I remember every word of this letter. I'll quote a couple of these bits for the audience. This is what I see for you right now. Possibilities. Our business talks a lot about storytelling and story doing. Taking the CCO job would be story doing for your brand a brand that cares deeply about women. I cannot tell you how many women have thanked me for taking the Leo CCO job. That alone made the decision fulfilling. I have asked Carter to think about your family and travel. I'm sure that there is a way that we can design this leadership role at FCB without compromising your very important role of mom. You can do this, Swati. We can do this together. From that moment on, I have had you with me in everything I have done. You've given me an ecosystem in which I could flourish. Our Times of India campaign, which was mentioned at the 3% uh, Next Creative Leadership track, if you all saw that yesterday, uh, won 25 international medals, and including an Athena Award from the 3% Conference. Thank you for being my Beyonce <laughs> and Santa being an incurable romantic, 
I can relate. Uh, I always dreamed this dream that a tall, dark stranger would one day rescue me. Little did I know it would be a beautiful blonde woman who likes her vodka stirred and patriarchy shaken. <laughs> I love you. Swati. So I would actually like to introduce three more dope, dope women uh, in this industry to, to come share their letters of gratitude. Uh, um, can we get our first person up on stage? Nancy Hill, CEO and founder of Media Sherpas. Sandra Sims Williams of Is there a slide with the name? I just want to make sure I get the jobs and titles right. And Lisa Leone. Yay. Cool. So take away. Dear Bonnie Lunt, you are one of the original badasses of powerful women who gave back. You took me under your wing in New York City when I arrived after 20 years experience in the business and felt like I was a stranger in a strange land. What business am I in? You took me under your wing, as I said, and you introduced me to the women you called the great broads, including Cindy Gallup, who led me to Cat Gordon. But most importantly, you taught me to keep my word and to always pay it forward. Thank you, Bonnie Lunt. Dear Audra, when we met 15 years ago, I was in the valley and you lifted me. You asked me, what do you really want? Why do you want it? What are you willing to do to get it? Who knew? You set me on a course of living my life by design and not by default. You are indeed a shining light and a true friend and more than you can call a badass. She is definitely a badass. Thank you with much gratitude. Um, my person is actually here, I think. Um, is Carolyn Detman here? Anywhere? Carolyn? Yeah. Stand up, Carolyn. Okay. <laughs> it's up to you. You don't have to. I just need for everybody to know that you're here. Um, this is a little longer. I'm so sorry. I'm never going to be asked back. I'll get through it as quickly as possible. <laughs> and I'm going to so go full circle and be like the second person that cries today. Sorry ahead of time. Dear Carolyn, on July 6, 2016, I wrote about my experiences with sexism and misogyny in advertising. It was terrifying, but I did it and it went very public. In the days that followed, I received messages from women all over the world, every continent, messages of solidarity and thanks for coming forward. In Chicago, however, the response was very different. Through anonymous comments online, I was called a bitch. I was misquoted and misrepresented. People said I deserved the treatment I got, and one person even said they doubted all of this happened to me because I wasn't very pretty. No one in Chicago would hire me. After almost two years, I couldn't pay my mortgage. I couldn't buy groceries. Everything went on credit cards, and I sunk further and further into debt. Then in March of this year, I read about Have Her Back. I knew someone who worked for you, so through tears I sent him a message and I asked, how would this be any different? How is it more than a series of memes and hashtags? What were you doing to help? What were you actually doing to help? And I remember this clear as day, he sent a message back that said, my boss wants to meet you. You don't know this, but when we first met, I felt really ashamed. This thing I did that I thought was really brave and this thing I did that I thought would help people like me ended up hurting my family. And I thought it was stupid. 
um, because I didn't help anyone at all. I was in a really dark place and thinking everything you could possibly think would come with it. And so I was apologetic when I first spoke with you. I said that I was not very well liked and I warned you that helping me would probably hurt your own reputation. And you basically looked at me and said, shut up. <laughs> you said, uh, of course people think those things about you. You're talented, you're female, and you have a voice and an opinion, God forbid. You said, look, here's what happened, plain and simple. You were blacklisted, and I think it's bullshit. And I want to help you. You put me on a panel, you introduced me to people, and you gave me a gig. Carolyn, that was seven months ago, and I think I've only had about two days off since. <laughs> 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 that panel and those introductions and that gig led to another and another and another. Pretty soon I stopped apologizing for myself so much and I started believing in myself again. You once told me that I'm not allowed to thank you anymore and obviously I'm not very good at following directions. <laughs> so, thank you. You thought you were showing a simple act of support but because of you I didn't disappear from this industry. I didn't disappear. Thank you for having my back, and thank you for having me back. I'm not just back for me, though. I'm, I'm back for everyone, and you taught me that, because you never know how much it will mean to that person and how close they will be to giving up. So, with more gratitude than you will ever know, thank you. I don't want to run the risk of running too far over time. Give them a round of applause. Give these ladies a round of applause. You all have postcards in your hands, in your chairs, in your laps. Write letters to people who have had your back. Support each other. Send something to somebody who cares. Put a stamp on it. Send it to the 3% bookstore outside because <laughs> we will send them to the people for you. And, you know, to cat to the 3% team, you know, I've been in this game for, for seven years. Uh, I am grateful for the bravery of those women to stand up, the graciousness and the sisterhood of these women and the communities that they represent. And to you in the audience for just taking the time to, to listen to all of us uh, today. So to all of you here, there, watching everywhere, thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>